Hey everyone, and welcome to the episode today. We are going to be doing something a little bit different than normal, and I really just love, as you may have noticed recently with some of the things that I've been posting on YouTube and some of the things I've been talking about in the podcast, I love talking about sort of the magical ways of being that we simply are as women and really tapping back into that. And to I've said this before, but I want to make sure people understand when I say magic, that doesn't mean, you know, you have to be pagan or a witch or anything like that. You can be any religion, you cannot be a religion and still tap into this aspect of yourself, because it's really just kind of coming home to yourself. And I think we're all trying to find more ease in our life, more joy in our life, allowing things to come in instead of always having to put out, out, out and not getting enough back. It's not working for us. So I wanted to chat with my friend Jen today, who you've probably seen on the podcast before. But um, she, she, Jen Ailey is a business creative money coach. She does such miraculous work with her clients. And so she was the person that I knew that I wanted to bring in to talk about the subject because she knows it. She does it. She embodies it. Um, and really helps her clients to do that too in their lives. So welcome, Jen. Thank you. I'm glad to be here again. Yeah. So we were kind of just talking about before we got on um, about how, you know, so much of this is like kind of coming back to the self and really kind of starting to witness your own power and how to kind of bring in, and some people would say manifest, but I'll just say bring in things that you want, including money, including um, joy, including love and connection. So where are some places that you feel like is good for people to start with that? Yeah. So, um, so I want to, I want to like, just mention that word manifest, because that's a really common thing people talk about. And I think it's, it's one of those things that can be totally spiritual bypassing tool. Just that yes. word, I'm going to manifest this. Yes. It, can be un- yeah. it can be really ungrounded. Yeah. So I'm all about grounding and practical. And one of my mm-hmm. favorite definitions of manifesting or like ways to manifest is um, it's about actually um, creating the circumstances, circumstances mm-hmm. from mm-hmm. which things can grow. Mm-hmm. like you're not going to manifest out of thin air right. and I think sometimes people are like I'm just going to win the lottery I'm just going to find right. money's going to come to me I'm just going to yeah. think about this thing and yeah, it's going to happen and, it, yeah. and it's like sometimes that does happen yeah I'm not I'm not going to say it doesn't because I I've experienced that too but like but creating the circumstances in your life in your business where things can come in like creating fertile soil mm-hmm. in an environment that's conducive that you're nurturing mm-hmm. where things can come in yeah. So that's really like my favorite perspective of manifesting because it really helps you ground things mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. in a way that you can actually do something about on the ground. Mm-hmm. Like you actually, you, nothing's going to grow and you can't have a harvest unless you like have the dirt and you plant soil. Seeds. Yeah. And you know, so yeah. you have to do all that in your life yeah. before you can harvest, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes you do shine over here or polish over here and it shines over there, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. like that's true too. I find that a lot in my life. Can you oh, yeah. actually expand on that a little yeah, bit? So, so for example, in business, like mm-hmm. I might put energy into one kind of marketing thing, mm-hmm. you know, and it may not work the way I wanted it to, but I might get something else as a result of that. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Or like, Mm -hmm. not even as a result of that, but like, you know, I put out this energy here and then something else comes to me from this direction. Mm -hmm. Um, So it's just keeping the energy moving as a practice, like not being stagnant and giving up and like not doing stuff, like keeping the energy moving is a big deal. I think that that is something that I'm still learning that lesson because for me, and I think what frustrated me with the idea of manifestation for so long was I was putting out all this effort, but it wasn't coming back to me or it wasn't showing up in the way that I wanted it to, right? It's like <laughs> it's sort of that ideal, that sort of um, masculine ideal of like, you do this thing, 
and then you have this outcome, right? And that's kind of how everything's set up, right? It's all, all of the things, all of the programs, all of that. You do this thing, you'll see this thing come. And I got really frustrated because it was like, that's not showing up in my life that way. And I'm doing all the right things, you know? And then there was some point there was, I mean, I think along the way I noticed it here and there, but I, I, over the past like year or two, I've noticed it much more deeply that, oh, here I am focused on this particular area. And then all of a sudden this other thing that I wasn't even really thinking about grows, blooms, comes out of nowhere, seemingly, you know? Yeah. The thing is, we're not in freaking control. Right. Right. Like we are not in control. And some of that manifesting stuff acts as if it sounds like you're in control. You're mm-hmm. not in control of mm-hmm. your life and mm-hmm. everything that's happening. You cannot control the world. Like that's I don't for care damn who sure. you are. <laughs> and so it's like, you know, you can change your perception of something. Yeah. You know, you can, you can tell yourself, okay, when I put energy into this thing, I'm not going to harvest the same day that I plant the seed, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and give yourself patience and know that something better may come up, you know, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. again, keeping the energy moving. Yeah. And then, you know, seeing that something is happening for me right now, like, mm-hmm. what do I need to learn from this experience to take into the next thing? Not mm-hmm. taking it personally, you mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. that's a big that's one. That's really too. hard. <laughs> yeah, it is hard. Yeah. And that's why it's important to have support in your life, you know, yeah. whether it's colleagues or coaches or whatever, because you've got to just have that perspective, like, okay, just keep going, you know, yep. And, yep. and don't keep doing the same thing over again, expecting different results, you know, because right. that's not it either. It's like, what can I learn? And, you know, how can I align? And then the other thing that I'm into right now is human design, Mm. like seeing like your human design operating system and how you make decisions emotionally or not or whatever, Mm -hmm. and understanding um, how you work. Do you Mm -hmm. need to respond to things? Do you need to initiate like those, Mm -hmm. those kind of things as they're, they're, they are game changers. Like Mm -hmm. that is huge for me. Like that, you know, it's like that kind of stuff and helping my clients do that kind of stuff is huge because it helps them. Oh, that's why this didn't work for me. That's why this did work this one time. And I responded to this thing. It's mm-hmm. like, yeah. Mm-hmm. So that kind of stuff is huge too. And that's a whole yeah. rabbit hole that I'm not an expert on, but yeah. Well, can you just share what your human design is yeah, so for those I'm that a, haven't heard of it before? Yeah. I'm a, a manifesting generator. Okay. Um, that's my operating system. There's five operating systems. Okay. And so for my system, it's best for me to respond to things, mm. not to initiate. And I mm-hmm. remember the first time I heard this, I was so frustrated because <laughs> I was in the middle of this huge, like cold call sales thing for yeah. my old, my old business. Yeah. And I had an assistant doing all these calls and everything mm. and it wasn't working. Mm. And I was so frustrated, you know, yeah. and then, and then like I had an opportunity, I had, then I'd have opportunities come out of the blue. Like I would have my jewelry somewhere, multiple places. And this is my old jewelry business mm-hmm. and they would see it and then contact me and like, Oh, I have five salons mm-hmm. regionally that I want to put in high end hotels that I want to put your jewelry in. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, I couldn't have created that. Right, you know? right, right. And yeah. so then I respond to that. And it yeah. was like this, the wholesale accounts that I had for years, you know? Wow. So, but, but it was like, I kept the energy moving right. by being visible in those places that, and they saw my yeah. work. That's so what I, I was going to add, it. right? Yeah. Is that for people that are listening, she still was planting seeds, right? You were still out there tending the soil by going and having your jewelry set up at a place, right? Mm -hmm. It's not like you're just hanging out at home waiting Mm -hmm. for opportunities to come your way. You're out there doing things. And then these other things happen. And is is manifesting generator one of the ones that's the most common or no? Yeah, I think it's like 27 to 30-ish. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's certainly worth you know, knowing what your own Mm -hmm. operating system is, right. And, and how there may be people listening to this that say, Hey, yeah, I do this thing. And then this thing happens because that's part of how their life works, you know, and it's, but if you're not in that and you keep trying to make things happen in that way, you're just going to get frustrated over and over and over again. Yeah, Um, absolutely. Yeah. And, and I really have Mm -hmm. felt that like, you know, how do I tend to myself to keep the energy going and also understand that it's okay to take breaks too, right? Oh, yeah. So there's that ebb and flow, especially of the feminine system, mm-hmm. right? We're not meant to 
be tending the soil all the time, right? We're we're meant to sort of be out there doing things and then coming back in, out there doing things and coming back in. And that's also, you know, something that is definitely not supported culturally. Right. Um, we have to we have to be rebels and t- taking care of ourselves and yeah. and and respecting that cycle that, that the Hakomi sensitivity cycle I love. Which what, is can you like, explain that? Yeah. So basically it's where you um, you take action, you do something. Mm-hmm. Actually, first, let's start with rest. So re- imagine a circle. The top mm-hmm. is rest mm-hmm. and you rest and then you have insight after you rest. Mm-hmm. From the insight, you take effective action. Mm-hmm. And then from the effective action, you gain satisfaction mm-hmm. and then you rest. Mm-hmm. Our culture acknowledges the action Mm-hmm. And, the, and the insight and the action, mm-hmm. but not so much satisfaction and rest. And sometimes we are trying to take action and we're, t- we're coming from this place of like trying and pushing and shitting. And that's why it's not effective because mm-hmm. we're, we're in this place and, but we're, and we're also not respecting the satisfaction part of the cycle yeah. of actually acknowledging and honoring the progress we've made, the impact we're making. Yeah. gratitude practice or prosperity practice of just appreciating and then resting again Yeah. before we go back to action. Like yeah. if, we, if we skip those cycles and those aspects, we're, we're not going to be, we're going to be dysregulated basically. Yeah. Yep. You know? I had this conversation yesterday um, in a summit I was on about cycles and particularly for women, how important cycles are, right? Our bodies, I mean, all of us, men and women, however you mm-hmm. identify you're, we're cyclical beings, right? Because we are part of nature, but yeah. particularly if you are a cycling person, then every month you have a cycle that should inform you of when it's time to be more out in the world and when it's time to come, you know, inside more. We have a daily cycle. That's the foundation of that, right? Our circadian rhythm. And even that's so wonky for most of us, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's yeah, like, the- we're wide awake and the moon, at night and, and the planets and, and, yes, and all, it's right. all cycles. It's right. all cycles. And yeah. we can leverage those too. Yes. Instead yeah. of like, instead of trying to be, you know, these linear beings that are solely right. like masculine, hierarchical, linear yeah. building, we get to honor the growth and the energy and the connection to all these yeah. things, you know? Yeah. And that's actually Um, where our health resides too. You know, I always tell people like, if you're fighting against your cycles, your daily cycle, your monthly cycle, any of that, you're not going to be able to be healthy. Like it is health. It is the foundations of health. You know, all of our hormones are based on that daily cycle and that monthly cycle. And so um, we're, we're trying to do all these things to make health happen, make our hormones feel better when in reality, it's like, a lot of it is unwinding what we're doing and allowing our bodies to get back into those cycles in order for things to level out. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So what are some other approaches that you really recommend for your clients, especially let's just talk money for a second, because that's Mm -hmm. a big part of your practice. That's a big part of everybody's lives, especially these days, there's not enough money to go around. It feels like, so let's, let's dive into that. So, um, I just really start with money as a relationship. Mm -hmm. And so no matter what's happening externally, we Mm -hmm. each have our own relationship with money. Mm -hmm. So we get to be connected to an integrity with our own relationship with money. Mm -hmm. So that means spending time with it, (laughs) like doing your numbers, Mm -hmm. being Mm -hmm. clear on what you have, what you need, Mm -hmm. when you need it by uh, what your vision is with money, like mm-hmm. thinking about a long-term relationship with money, mm-hmm. like what your vision is, what you'd want to create. Yeah. And that's one of my favorite things is actually looking at your current income and then expanding it to 30% more. And what would you do with it? Mm. Like, you know, and then what would you do with it? It was 50% more, mm-hmm. you know, or, you know, and just like that kind of practice and cultivation of mm-hmm. connection with money, mm-hmm. it taps into the possibility And, Mm -hmm. um, it's a prosperity practice, you know, Mm -hmm. it's like, how do I, and then, and then just, you know, I I was, I just found this recording on my phone yesterday from like years ago where I was talking about hitting a bottom financially. Mm -hmm. And then I realized that I was at the store, I bought some stuff. I came home and I was like, Oh wait, this isn't my bottom bottom financially because I actually had money to buy groceries without thinking about it (laughs) because I had been, I had been in a place years and years ago like you know, many years ago where yeah. I didn't know if I'd have money to pay for food and I didn't wow. have money to pay for food at one point. Yeah. So it's like, 
you know, it didn't last that long. Luckily, obviously I survived, Yeah. but like, it was, it was like, you know, it's like, okay, like I, I'm better now than I was then. So yeah. great. Yeah. Like any kind of perception and not, and not being Pollyanna sunshine bullshit, you know, right. but I'm not saying that at all. Cause that doesn't work either. Yeah. I'm saying like, per, like make sure you're grounding your perception and being honest with where you are. Like mm-hmm. for, for me, I got into major crazy debt because I was delusional about where I was mm-hmm. and I was delusional about how fast my business would grow at the time, you know, yeah. 20 years ago. Yep. Um, so I'm not saying that at all. I'm yeah. saying like relationship. And so it can be, you know, doing numbers, playing with numbers, visioning with numbers, mm-hmm. um, you know, honoring your bills that you are paying, like mm-hmm. honoring what you are doing. And having a vision with your money, like what would you do with more money? Really Mm -hmm. tapping into that and feeling into it as a practice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, And then, and then backing it up. And then like, what are you going to do about it? Yeah. You know? Yep. Um, And then not taking it personally too, if things don't go your way, you know? Mm -hmm. And so it's, there's so much there. It's like a relationship. I mean, everything that you mentioned and said, you know, it's, it's like a relationship. And one of the things that I found helpful for me recently. And I'm sure there's many different ways to sort of approach this and tackle this, but, you know, having kind of like you're talking about, like having a money date, whatever the time, mm-hmm. you know, each week where I look at and my money, which I've done for a while, but I actually, for me now go to my altar beforehand mm. and do some, you know, sitting and, um, uh, seeing some of the bigger picture happening there and, and getting sort of grounded in this isn't about my worth as a person, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. That yeah. like, I think tapping into the worth of self and being a magical being and some of the things you've talked about, like how much I've grown in these different ways, getting that all on the surface and reminding myself of that before I go into any money stuff, especially if it's a week where I'm like, I do not want to look. Yeah. 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 Um, Because I think it can be really intense on the nervous system, right. To be like, I'm going to go in even when I don't want to go in because I know things aren't good right now. Mm -hmm. But I will say, you know, that practice of doing that, that you, you definitely build that muscle of like, I know actually going in and looking at the numbers is going to give me more, um, a, I don't want to say a sense of control, but a sense of like, okay, I know what to do now. Right. Yeah. And the way, the way that I look at that and talk about it is like, if you, if you want to go on a, so if you want to, let's use a boat as a metaphor, boat mm-hmm. is a metaphor for a lot of things or right? analogy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so let's imagine that you want to go on a trip. Yeah. So you have a boat and it's in the harbor yep. and you want to go on this trip. If you want to stay in the harbor, you know, it doesn't matter. The boat can sit there and be halfway rotten. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter. Right. Mm-hmm. But if you want to go somewhere in that boat, mm-hmm. you've got to know how much gas you have, what the weather's going to be like, if mm-hmm. there's holes in the sail, uh, if there are, you know, rusty bits in the bottom, mm-hmm. like you've got to know if all the gauges work properly, mm-hmm. you know, you've got to know all that stuff. And so when you look at your numbers, you're doing an assessment of like how far you can get before you have to get more money, basically, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, the wind, the wind, and, and you can't control the wind. <laughs> right. Right. But you can control your clarity. Mm-hmm. And you know, one of my favorite phrases is clarity leads to freedom. Yeah. And that's what it is. It's clarity that you're getting by doing this work. Because yeah. if you don't, if you, if you look at where you are on the map, then you know where to step next Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know and then I want to talk about intention because you know you can cast your intention out in front of you for things you know and even you can set an intention before you do numbers I had all my clients set an intention at the beginning of a session Mm. like what do you want to feel more of today what do you want to create today Mm -hmm. because I'm going to hold that space for them and it's going to be like they're going to feel relief they're going to feel motivation Mm. they're going to feel clarity by the end of the session because Mm -hmm. we're saying it's going to happen we're creating Mm -hmm. it Mm mm-hmm yeah. So you get yeah. to do that with your numbers too, you know? Oh, I love that. Yeah. And that's, that's kind of, I guess what I end up doing in sitting in front of the altars is creating intention. And, and I love like as a coach that you create that space, right? So it's, it's, I, I'm, as people are listening, I want you to sort of see these as options that you have, right? You can probably in best case scenarios to do both, be able to create that for yourself and have, you know, someone else in your life, coach, friend, family member, um, create that space with you too. Um, but you know, even if you can just get started right now, like I was saying to you before we got on, like I have all these like 
these rocks and, and different things that I have on my altar. Right. And we just had that blue moon, uh, full moon last month. And I definitely let them sit outside and bathe in that full blue moon. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, and, um, what I always say to people, again, this isn't, this isn't, it doesn't have to be a religious thing or a pagan thing or what have you, you know, that's identified that way. If, if, if you don't want it to be, it's just, you're literally just putting energy into supporting yourself, right? You're mm -hmm. saying, Hey, I'm creating this thing that I'm bringing back to myself to help me in what can be sometimes tough situations and, yeah. and tough things to deal with. Right. Yeah. And I want to, the energy thing is a big deal. So another thing I'm going to mention is that, um, so I, I look at money, like, as if it's a feather falling from the sky, mm -hmm. if you reach for it and grab it, the air you displace will push it away. Mm. So you just keep your hand open to receive it. Mm. So it's mm -hmm. like this, it's like this, the receptivity piece is huge, which means mm -hmm. letting go of control. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. And even, even the delusion of control, because we don't yep. have control, but like, yep. you know, that, the idea of like, okay, I'm going to, I'm open to receiving, you yep. know, this is what I'll do with my money when I get it. Yep. These are the things I'm doing to create it. And that's all within my control. Right. Right. So that's it. You yeah. know? Yeah. And, and that's all you can do. Yep. And I'll just add really quickly as a business owner and for those who um, uh, work for themselves that are listening, you know, one of the the hardest things in business for me is launching a new program, right? Because it's like, it's a lot of work to market and be out there and be doing all these things. And you're just like waiting for people to sign up. Right. And you're like, come on, we're going to make this happen. And I, every single time it's a lesson every single time and I'm getting it on a deeper level, but it's still tough in the process that it is always towards the end, a, that the most people are going to sign up and B when I've let go of how many people I want in that program, how I want it to look all of that every single time it is that's when a flood comes in, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and so getting that as a practice where you're like, okay, I'm really working more on the letting go of the outcomes. Like mm -hmm. you can have your dreams, but let go of those specific outcomes because that's that's what creates stress when you hold on too tight to how yeah. you want it to be, right? Exactly. And kind of inhibits that energy from, from mm -hmm. moving. Um, so we're going to wrap up here in just a minute, but do you have another quick thing that uh, people can do at home, a quick exercise that can help them around this money piece? The thing that comes up is a ritual. So mm -hmm. doing something, because ritual changes us, right? A ritual mm -hmm. shifts us. So I love any kind of ritual where I'm letting go of things that are not serving me, mm -hmm. fears, anxieties, stress, attachments, mm -hmm. like rege um, what's, what's the word? Uh, resentments, mm -hmm. you know, anything that's like taking up space in my psyche. Mm -hmm. I like letting go of those and like writing them down or saying them out loud mm -hmm. um, and then burning it Burn and it. then like washing it in the ashes down a river or something mm -hmm. and just really letting it go and then creating space for what I want to create mm -hmm. from that clear place. So anytime mm -hmm. that I have a thousand different ways to do this, but I'll just say this one. So the idea of like writing stuff down, getting it out, like sort of a purge of emotional baggage, so to speak, you know, mm -hmm. and even, even if you want to do this about money, like your resentments toward money, mm, like getting yeah. it out, like yeah. what all the different times you felt like, you know, challenges and, you know, anything about money, you want to get out any resentments. Like that's yeah. a huge practice. It's something that people do in my money program. Mm -hmm. And like you, you get that out and then you create space for more, you yeah. know, you're, you're open to receiving more. Yeah. Yeah. So good. I love it. So we'll definitely put in the notes, some of these specific things that people can do to start doing right away and to start shifting things. And, you know, we've been talking about money, but you can utilize that for a lot of different things in your life. So especially the resentment piece, letting go of those. Well, thank you, Jen, for sharing all your wisdom. Let people know how they can get in contact with you. Great. So um, I have some really wonderful resources for you about money of a money makeover kit mm -hmm. and a great visualization and a prosperity four day program that you can get online for free at Jen, wow. a Jen Ailey coaching.com. So J E N A L Y coaching.com forward slash resources.
Oh, that's so awesome. That's such a great gift. Thank you for offering that to people. Sure, my pleasure. And we'll also have that in the notes. If you can't remember that, you can go to the notes and just click on it directly and get there. So um, always a pleasure to chat with you. Thank you for coming back on the podcast and Thank you. riffing with me. <laughs> <laughs> Not rapping, but riffing. <laughs> All right, you guys, thanks for being here with us and I'll see you next time.